Another year, another top 10 tax change list from your friends at Nelson Financial Planning. You're listening to Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars, including those tax dollars, and more importantly, kind of how to minimize those, or at least understand the latest rules so you don't wind up paying more than what you should. And before the break, we were talking about the required minimum distribution. Obviously, a big penalty there if you don't take it and how you can ultimately avoid that. Uh, on the program, of course, my name is Joel Garris. I'm a certified financial planner, certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning. Dollars and Cents uh, is one of the most widely listened to radio programs throughout the Central Florida region, coming to you on a host of stations throughout that region, and also one of the top 25 financial planning podcasts. So make sure you check us out on your favorite podcast podcast platform of choice. Any trouble at all finding us, go to our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com, and there you'll see the icons. Click on the one that looks most familiar to you, and you will get immediately connected to our channel on that particular platform. Once there, go ahead and subscribe to us. That way you don't have to do that uh, whole process all over again. My name again is Joel Garris. Joining me on the program, Kristen Cayley, fellow certified financial fiduciary, certified financial planner, and a CPA. Are you planning on adding any more uh, letters to the, you know, to the, to the name here uh, in the <laughs> new year? It. Or uh, you got enough of an alphabet I think I've soup. tapped out. <laughs> You're tapped out. Yeah, enough of an alphabet, uh, uh, alphabet soup. Uh, on the program, we're talking about those top 10 tax changes is something that I used to sit down and write. Uh, and obviously, we've passed the torch over to you, Kristen, to, to kind of for the past few years, you've been writing these. Um, and obviously, it's a piece that's interesting. You know, it's a piece that I think a lot of our clients look forward to getting. We mail that out to them. Uh, this week, they uh, should have received that in the, their mail, along with kind of our January welcome to the new year kind of letter that announces our uh, slate of events and those kinds of things that we we have during uh, during the course of of the year, uh, or I guess really in the first half of the year is really kind of the list of events that we sent out. And um, so uh, we'll we'll do a special offer here on the the program uh, for those of you who may not be clients of the firm at Nelson Financial Planning. Well, the first question would be why aren't you right? Uh, number two, though, if you're interested in uh, getting uh, your own copy of, of this of these top ten tax changes, uh, we would encourage you to call the office 407-629-6477 or you can go to our website which is of course open 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year and uh, fill out the contact form there requesting your top 10 uh, tax changes for 2024 so one of the changes that I guess is sort of standard every year right is is kind of they adjust the limits for how much you can contribute to the various retirement plans. So what are some of those adjustments, Kristen, Kristen that are on tap for the year 2024? Yes, yes. So it's important to kind of keep these in mind. So if you are maxing out these limits, just to make sure you update it for 2024. Uh, so we'll run through these. So the updated 401k, 403b, and 457 limits are 23,000. The catch-up remains at 7,500, and this is for those that are over age 50. Uh, the traditional IRA and Roth IRA limits increase to $7,000, uh, with the catch-up for those over age 50 remaining at $1,000. Uh, simple IRA limits increase to $16,000. Uh, simple IRA, the catch-up is still $3,500. SEP IRAs increase to $69,000. And HSA limits increased for individuals to $4,150 and for family plans at $7,750. So sort of nor your normal inflationary adjustments. But, mm -hmm. you know, here's the thing about how inflation works. It does sort of, uh, I guess, erode or increase effective numbers over time. Uh, so if I'm hearing you correctly, Kristen, for 2024, if I'm over 50 and I would fall into that category these days, uh, then I can actually put $8,000 in a traditional IRA or, 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 or traditional or, or, or Roth IRA if I, if I wanted to. That's right. So that's interesting because I guess this tells you how long I've been doing this. I remember the limit being $2,000. So that has quadrupled thanks to these inflationary increases, but albeit that's over the 
bit of a period of time. Uh, anyway, uh, the next rule, uh, the next tax change that you talk about in your top ten uh, tax uh, change uh, list, Kristen, is 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 all of these required distribution rules. And where this comes from is that the big change happened in 2020, eliminating the stretch IRA, which we, we feel is perhaps one of the largest tax grab by the folks in Washington that you don't know about. Let me repeat that again. This is one of the largest tax grabs by the folks in Washington that you don't know about. And here's why you're not going to really know about it, is that it happens when you die. So when you die and your beneficiaries inherit your retirement accounts, they've got to pay money on the amount of those dollars that they inherit. Now, under the old rules, Kristen, right? A stretch IRA, they had a long time to do that. Mm -hmm. They could stretch it over their lifetimes, which is pretty incredible. Rest of your lifetime. That's where mm -hmm. when you have these tricks of how maybe you name grandkids or even great grandkids as mm -hmm. beneficiaries of IRAs, my goodness, you're talking about a potential of 70 or 80 years of a distribution schedule that really does spread out the taxes, allows the balance to continue to grow on a tax deferred basis. I mean, really true truly powerful stuff that all changed in 2020. Yeah, unfortunately. So in 2020, the new rule is that if your beneficiaries inherit your retirement accounts, they now have a 10-year window to liquidate the full account. And this is one of those things you were mentioning earlier in the program about there's a lot of these changes that the IRS hasn't really caught up to in terms of issuing out some final sort of rules on how to deal with. And this would be one of those as well, where we've seen an attempt to sort of issue out some rules on what this 10-year window looks like or what you're supposed to do in the 10-year window. And, and then other times where they, those, the, 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 the comments from the IRS have been met with resistance and, 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 and questions. And, and so ultimately last year, I think they kind of res landed on where they're going to be. So tell us a little bit about kind of what those rules are and kind of their, I guess, quasi-final form from the IRS. <laughs> yeah, so the 10-year the window still remains. You have to liquidate the account in 10 years. The real question was, do you need to take out an RMD throughout those 10 years? And the IRS has come to say, yes, if the original owner of the retirement account was at RMD age or already taking their RMDs, then you as the beneficiary should be taking out a small amount over that 10-year period each year. And that's based upon the amount of that required distribution that then you would have to take mm -hmm. is going to be based upon your life expectancy, much like the old stretch rules. Correct. So there's a minimum amount, little minimum amount that you would have to take, leaving the rest of the account to grow on a tax-deferred basis. But by year 10, you got to take the whole thing out. Right, right. So it kind of makes sense to take some out along the way instead sure. of waiting till year 10 and, and having the massive tax bill. Uh, but this is mainly just for those that had that RMD requirement uh, on the decedent's account. Yeah, so a little bit of a distinction there, but uh, obviously still that, you know, the 10 year rule applies. Uh, now, interestingly, it also applies to Roth too, doesn't it? The 10 year year does apply to Roth, yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't matter whether you inherit a retirement account, an IRA, or a mm -hmm. Roth, you're still going to have to take it all out. And I guess the heart of it is that the, the folks in Washington, well, they desperately need your tax dollars to fund whatever it is that they're funding up there. And um, ultimately, this is a good way to kind of take those assets out, right, that are that are growing tax-free in the case of the Roth or growing tax-deferred in the case of a traditional retirement account and, and sort of force you to pay the taxes on it by re, by by virtue of these One required minute. distributions. Right. And the penalty is the same for these required minimum distributions. Okay. It is 25 percent if you miss it. OK. Yeah. All right. So then there's some pretty significant mm -hmm. penalties that come into play as as well. Um, on that, you know, we mentioned the qualified charitable distribution amount um, sort of increasing from 100 to 105,000. There's another item that also has has in, increased as well that you mentioned in this top 10 uh, tax change list, and that has to deal with gifting. So uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about gifting, what that means, what the tax implications are and kind of how that plays out. So we'll tackle that topic next here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garrison, Kristen Cayley of Nelson Financial Planning.